Hello and welcome to our webinar today. Um, we are very happy to have you here today, spending the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes with us. I hope you can hear me well. My name is uh, Ralf Klimke and I'm responsible for sales and marketing at ArgoSense. And I have with me in the meeting uh, Christian Middle, my colleague who is in charge of our development and service organization. Um, especially in times of uh, shorter development circles, decreasing budgets and changing demand from the markets. Uh, integration and data exchange solutions um, for um, these purposes within and between companies is more relevant than ever. The growing demand for solutions in this area shows us clearly that uh, we are still on the right track with uh, our company and with our product. So we are very happy to give you today a brief insight into our solution and uh, company, followed by a live demonstration of our integration solution, Argus and Symphony One. So, uh, and last but not least um, for the agenda, please feel free to ask any questions during the webinar using the Q&A panel in your Teams webinar software here. Um, we will answer them all collectively uh, together at the end of the webinar. Argosense itself, the company uh, we have founded in 2009. So that means we are on the market now since more than 15 years, so a very long time in the meantime. Um, so currently we are selling the third generation of our core product, Argosense Symphony 1. And uh, we are uh, working very hard on the generation 4 to be released by the end of this year with some um, major enhance enhancements, of course, to the platform. So stay tuned for our pre-release webinars. Um, after this summer period, we will start with a series of um, additional webinars where we will present to you um, the new generation, generation four ahead of time, of course. So our customers will have, as always, um, enough time to, to get familiar with everything and plan the updates and, and so on. Yeah, so um, in the last years we, we have a lot of long-term loyal customers in our base here, um, which have decided for ArgoSense. And we are very proud that uh, most of them are using, or nearly all of them are using our software very successful. So this means um, if there is the need for you to get first-hand information about us and our solutions, just feel free to ask us for direct contact with our customers. So here you see an excerpt of our customer base. So if there is a company which um, you are interested in talking to about Argosense, just um, shoot us an email or get in touch with us here. So um, having a look on Argosense Symphony 1 from a very high flight height here. Um, this is more or less the central hub for, for all tool connections. So it's collecting and distributing all the data uh, where it's needed. So the different tools behind these uh, domains you see here, like requirements management, test management, and so on, uh, in the product lifecycle are supported and can be orchestrated to a yeah, complete and traceable tool chain with the help of, of our Argosense Symphony 1 solution, but also um, external systems from customers, um, suppliers, or other development partners can be connected with each other using um, Symphony 1 as the, as the distribution hub here for the data. Um, how are we doing that? Best, um, our platform adapters, which are delivered with the integration hub, ensure that we can make uh, use of the specific tool functionalities, for example, translating data, of course, format um, correctly during the synchronization processes. So that means Symphony cares about um, giving you always the same way of configuring um, the integrations, regardless of which tools need to be connected. 
Um, the more about the setting up uh, an integration and the configuration of Symfony One will be uh, will be shown in the live demonstration in a few in a few minutes by by Christian. So more or less, um, Augustine Symphony stands for clear communication between processes, people, and systems here. So Symfony is, uh, let's say, split into two main use cases. Our customers uh, using the platform uh, for um, one we call development tool integration as kind of classic way of <clears throat> integrating best of breed tools within your own organization. And the second use case here is uh, how we call it B2B data exchange uh, in order to connect systems between different companies. Um, for example, in a customer supplier relationship, um, this is mostly used here in our case in the automotive industry uh, in order to connect ticket systems um, uh, from, from, from car suppliers. Um, with the car manufacturer specific supplier portals uh, in order to exchange development data in, in high frequency. So here we are talking about tools like uh, BMW, AC or Mercedes-Benz Stark system or Volkswagen and Porsche. They have their own distinct systems where they usually connect their suppliers with. And with the help of Symfony here on the supply side, we can uh, achieve a completely automated uh, data exchange and data transfer between your or supplier's internal ticket system and um, the car manufacturer's um, supplier portals and their ticket systems here. So these are the, the two main use cases uh, which we see here. So and um, before I hand over to Christian here, so just a few bullet points on uh, what kind of benefits you can expect from, from Argus and Symfony 1, which will make uh, your life or life of your developers and uh, support personnel much more easier and of course helps save a lot of extra effort and budget and time, of course. So first of all, of course, Symfony is guaranteeing a bi-directional integration and information exchange uh, more or less out of, out of the box. Uh, that means that uh, different departments uh, in your organization using different tools, uh, they can really communicate without the different people leaving their own tool uh, and, and have the need to log into another tool which probably is not really related to them or then they are not used to working with it. So this is part of uh, the reasons why tools like Argos and Symphony here come into place. And um, then, of course, uh, there's no need anymore for any copy pasting information, no separate email um, chats or, or real chats here necessary. So all the information really is kept inside your product lifecycle workflow, more or less. So you can make use of, for example, of the comments, um, the, the comment functionalities your tools are using. So there's no separate chat outside of your product lifecycle workflow necessary. So in the end, everything is uh, within your development systems and um, is traceable at all at all times. So from the administration point of view, Symfony is a point and click configuration product. So there are no programming skills necessary at all. Um, and last but not least, this gives uh, your administrators um, that using a really central technology for all integrations efforts you, you are planning here, um, which is, I would say, one of the top three reasons here why people or companies um, are really going with uh, with Argus and Symfony here, that they have one single technology and not a bunch of different um, integration scripts or plugins or whatever they have to maintain. So it's really here one, one central technology. Okay, so let's have a quick view into, into the product in the, next, in the next couple of minutes, uh, and then we will return here um, to, <clears throat> to my presentation. And afterwards, we can then go directly into the Q&A session. So Christian, 
it's your part now. If you would like to share your screen. Okay, that's good. Thank everybody. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. So I have uh, prepared for uh, this afternoon uh, a demonstration uh, with an integration between uh, Jira and Azure. So uh, we have a quick look on the Jira project itself. I've been playing uh, with it a bit uh, in the past couple of um, minutes. And um, here's the Azure DevOps uh, project. All the items are already synced and um, I will show you uh, what it takes in Symfony uh, to set up a sync like this. So um, to set up a sync, you simply have to um, give it a name. Jira to Azure tool. You have to select uh, a source and a target tool. Um, source and target tool are just uh, names um, without specific um, meaning. Um, we could also do it the other way around. Um, a couple of flags, create target means that objects are also uh, created from the target tool side. So new objects uh, appearing in Azure um, will be synced to Jira. Um, transfer attachments, transfer comments um, is clear for uh, that uh, to, for the synchronization of attachment and comments. Um, transfer relationships is a new feature um, that was added with the 3.8.1 version um, that uh, allows you to also synchronize links um, between the objects. Um, next step in the configuration is then to set up um, the connection. So I have prepared this already, a connection to my uh, playground um, Shira project that we looked at. Um, credentials, um, sometimes there's specific um, settings for the individual adapters, like here as a flag, if it's a cloud or, or system or not. Um, then I can test uh, the connection. And then after that, I can select which um, of the project I want to synchronize and which item type I want to synchronize. Um, there's also possibility to check in uh, for specific custom queries. So you can set up um, any, any kind of query in JIRA and use that to uh, further specify where, which uh, objects should be uh, synchronized. Same story for the Azure side. Um, well, access token, test collection, and then we see uh, the target project and the target work item type that we want to use. Same story as we had for Jira. Um, there's also possibility to use a custom query to uh, further uh, specify which items should be synchronized. Um, next topic uh, is the, uh, the data transfer, the mapping. So we have to specify which attributes um, are synchronized. I've set up a pretty basic uh, system right now. Source field summary goes to target field um, in, uh, in the given direction. Um, as a consequence, we don't have a, a conflict resolution. If I set up a new field mapping, we can also, um, we, we, have, uh, we have the following uh, options direction to source to target or both um, means uh, both bidirectional synchronization then scenario create update uh, means uh, to which uh, uh, synchronization scenario the mapping should apply so that gives the possibility to um, have mappings that only apply for the create specifically uh, relevant uh, for mandatory attributes then we go for a source attribute, uh, we go for a target attribute, and uh, as we have specified both as the direction, we also have to specify uh, the conflict resolution, uh, source wins, target wins, or error. So for example, target wins. Um, so that's basically how I set up uh, the, the synchronization. 
Um, the rest of the story is um, on the one hand side, uh, what we call extensions. Um, right now, there's no extension installed in the system. So these are um, these are um, small, uh, let's say, scripts that you can set up um, to react to certain uh, to certain uh, phases of the synchronization, um, pre-create, post-create, uh, pre-update, uh, those kind of things, and then um, have very specific uh, code um, to to uh, let's say um, optimize the mapping or, or uh, kind of those things. Um, in the extension world, there's also a, since uh, the 3.8 version, there's a state transition manager living. Um, we have found uh, that uh, in some cases, the synchronizations um, get stuck due to, uh, to workflow uh, status, um, status issues. And for that, uh, there's a state transition manager built into these extensions that you can use to do automatic transitions um, from uh, any state um, to, um, to uh, other state. Um, last thing that needs to be done is uh, the schedule. Um, so um, I can activate it right now uh, to run every one minute. Um, it's basically it goes down to a cron uh, expression, and uh, then there is uh, there is a different failures, warnings, uh, errors if they occur, and there's a possibility specifically for the development phase um, where I can simply cause the uh, synchronization to run. So not much expected to happen. So what I will do is I will create another issue. Um, yeah, a real issue. Uh, remind me later. So and then uh, we see uh, in the dashboard what's going on in the system. So basically how many objects um, have been uh, modified, how many attachments, comments have been synchronized, and uh, also the execution time. So this is kind of um, kind of uh, uh, to understand where where the performance uh, is is it on the source on the target side. So pretty uh, slow network connection today. Um, that's uh, the reason we see uh, those uh, slow synchronization. So in the Azure side, we will do a quick refresh. And there is the real issue um, that was uh, synchronized from, from, um, from the JIRA side. So that's pretty much um, it. Um, no errors were happening, scheduler is active. Um, so nothing much more to do. Um, so I will hand it all back to Ralph. Yes, thanks, Christian. And um, yeah, first of all, sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, we had to change um, quickly uh, the tool behind uh, which Christian was showing. So we originally uh, planned to show uh, Jira with CodeBeamer. So we, but for technical reasons, we had to exchange uh, CodeBeamer with the, with the Azure, Microsoft Azure DevOps product. So, but I hope that's not an issue for you. Um, yeah, what you have seen here from Christian um, is one simple example how quick and easy it is to set up a, a sync, uh, sync process here. Of course, you can have as many set up as many things as you like uh, between all the different tools uh, you have you have in place um, and send data forth and back um, so uh, yeah this is as i said just a short excerpt of, of what is possible with symphony we just wanted to show how the easiness uh, works within the product how fast it is to set up um, now i'm Coming back to slides, just a second. 
So here we go. And a few words for, for recap. So again, if you have um, any questions, please type in, in your Q&A panel here that we can answer them collectively. Um, just a few bullet points on the, on the recap and the key features of what we have seen, the easy configuration, really no programming skills necessary, but if there is a need for more complex uh, integration logic or that you need to intervene within that synchronization process, as Kristen mentioned, we have these uh, so-called extensions where we can uh, inject uh, additional logic via, via our script language into that whole process um, to make uh, that synchronization even more customizable, um, especially to our customers' needs. So it's not only a full out-of-the-box product, but it's also very, very customizable, of course, here. Um, what we have seen, the dashboard uh, for an overview about what is running in the background, the statistics, error handling is very important. Um, somebody changes uh, in, in the source or in the target system something, and you ask yourself, why is the integration not running anymore correctly? So there you will find a lot of input uh, and hints what has happened in the background. Um, this is very important. Um, also, uh, Christian had a, a, sh a short message regarding um, performance uh, with these performance numbers. So we collect for each um, item, so to say, what was the processing time um, on source tool or the target tool and uh, an hour, or what, what, what is the uh, additional load from us or the initial time coming from us. And at the same time, uh, the system is so intelligent that it really um, adapts the load or adapts its performance to the load um, given by, by the system more or less. So if you have to exchange thousands of items, um, then this, uh, the system will just use more of the available hardware resources. And if they are reaching limits, uh, then of course administrators will be notified that uh, hardware resources should be increased, for example. So we can really, really scale to a very high level here. And I think uh, we have not come um, to a limit at, at one of our customers uh, where we, we reach software limits, so to say. Um, what we also have seen is that the things can be scheduled. We saw also that uh, they can be manually filed, but that is only more or less for administration and testing purposes, of course, where you not maybe not want to, want to wait for a scheduler. But we have additional means for running these, uh, these things, for example, uh, given by an event trigger from one of the tools, for example, source or the target tools. Uh, each of these things we have defined here has also kind of an interface, an API, which can be referenced from an outside tool to trigger that specific sync um, on, for example, a state change or whatever. Or we can also have so-called real-time uh, synchronization where um, we detect that there is a change in the source system, for example, and then immediately start the synchronization process and present uh, the changes in the, the source tool then as well. Um, yeah, last but not least, um, I think also from a commercial standpoint, it's very important. Uh, we have a very simplistic license model, so it's completely server-based. Um, you just pay for, let's say, the number of servers. Usually it's one server or most of our customers are using to run everything on. Um, so we do not count for any users which are uh, um, um, administered in your systems. Uh, we do not count for projects or endpoints or whatever. So really it's a, just an um, server-based. You just tell us which adapters you need and uh, this is more or less what the pricing then makes. Yeah, if there is uh, any question regarding pricing or you need a quotation or whatever, just contact us or your, your sales rep. Um, I think you have, in the meantime, our contact data, of course, and uh, then we can provide you with uh, the numbers which are fitting for you uh, and your, your needs here. 
Yeah, so that's more or less what we wanted to present today. So I think we made it in the planned half an hour. Um, very short and um, brief here. Um, just enter your questions in the, your, in the Q and A panel. Um, if something comes into your mind after that webinar, just um, contact us here. Phone number, email address. Look on our website. Um, there are also contact forms so where you can have specific questions, of course, and we usually respond very quickly here. Um, yeah, just take a look into systems. The systems. So, okay, we already had uh, one uh, questions here. Um, Just I will read them again for everybody. Um, first was generation four. That's more for maybe existing customers. If we uh, split the old generation and the new generation, which currently are also packaged in one product, so customers can use the generation three and the generation two products, so to say, um, as they like it. And this will be then split up into uh, into separate products, so that means that generation four then will be a completely separated uh, product from from all the other generations, and to say product generations. And the second question is: if there is there a chance to um, to link multiple Jira projects with multiple Azure projects end to M and um, as Christian answered, that is possible um, with the help of the extension. It's not out of the box. Um, this is, I would say, kind of high level requirement here, but it's possible with Symfony. So there is another question. Um, is it possible um, to, uh, to include a tool? Um, for which we do not have an adapter yet. Um, the answer from Christian is, is yes. Um, for Symphony Classic, uh, so the generation two product, we have uh, the ability to create own adapters. Um, so that means also our, our customers uh, can develop uh, their own adapters. There's little Java development know-how necessary, of course, but we have uh, something what we call adapter framework, and this is more or less the development environment, so to say, which gives you, um, say, a framework of the adapter, and you have to fill it with the with life. That means uh, you have there to, to configure and to develop the specific commands given from the API of the tool uh, that you want to build an adapter for. And uh, we have numerous customers already which have built their own adapters, for example, for self-written tools or for tools which are not really common in the market and we do not have adapters for. So generally speaking, yes, it's possible. <clears throat> and we encourage our customers, of course, to do so. So just waiting a little bit. So. Things anymore. So my last slide for today. Um, thank you very much for joining this webinar. It was a pleasure for us. Um, this information for you. This webinar, of course, has been recorded, and after uh, we have finished for today, you can uh, review it anytime using the access link you already have received for accessing the live webinar. Um, of course, we have a lot of other webinars already done in the past. Um, you can um, look on our YouTube channel um, or on our website on the blog section. You will find uh, usually um, the links to, to, the, to the webinars we had in the past. And of course, uh, it would be great if you would follow us on, on LinkedIn, for example, or on Xing and uh, all the other um, social media platforms we are on. And um, yeah, hopefully. Um, talk to you soon, and uh, if if you like, just subscribe to the next webinars we will have in the next weeks and months, and uh, maybe see you there again. So, 
Thanks a lot for joining again and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.